On our morning show today from WRCO, we are here to speak about Rural Life Day and learn about it uh, and its history. And uh, joining us here, Dick Hauser and Randy and Shelly Schmidt, as we look forward to hearing about that and learning about this big event. Dick, we'll start with you since you're kind of the radio veteran here in the studio and <laughs> involved in a lot of things. Tell us a little bit about Rural Life Day. Well, uh, I guess you started out correctly, Phil, saying I'm involved in a lot of things. But uh, Rural Life Day has been uh, something that I've had a vested interest in for a long, long time. Uh, it goes back to about 1979 when uh, it came to Keysville, St. Mary's at Keysville. And uh, the unique thing about that particular one was that while we always have a mass and a blessing of animals and so forth, then we go to having a dinner. And that particular dinner was strictly produce from the area. In other words, all the farmers, uh, the wives, the gardens brought stuff in, farmer uh, furnished the, the meat for it. And so it we just thought it was really a, a great opportunity to showcase the Richland County uh, ag and uh, some of the things that the people here did. But anyway, let's get on to, to the present thing we want to talk about. And that is, this will be the 43rd Rural Life Day uh, on the Diocese of La Crosse. And for those that don't quite know where the Diocese of La Crosse is, it basically is the Mississippi River, and then it starts from Prairie du Chien, follows the Wisconsin River up uh, along the east side. And then when we get clear up toward the top end, you get to Eau Claire County and uh, County Street across there. So that's all of the encompasses of the Diocese of La Crosse. Each year, Rural Life Day moves to a different deanery. And each deanery, there are 10 within the diocese, and each deanery has uh, a half a dozen parishes involved in it. And so the one that's uh, hosting it this year is called the Richland Deanery, and that includes the uh, parishes around here like Richland Center, Keysville. Uh, it gets over as far as uh, Five Points, I think it is. Uh, not Five Points, but... Uh, uh, Rolling Ground? Rolling Ground, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Gaze Mills and on up to Viroqua and then over to Hillsboro. So that's kind of the, the Richland Deanery so that people have an idea uh, who's kind of sponsoring it this year. And the Richland Center Parish, St. Mary's and Richland Center, is really the host parish. And uh, the unique thing is that up until about 10 years ago, we always just celebrated Rural Life Day at the church and then went to whatever facility they had and had our, our dinner and, and uh, then went on. But about 10 years ago, uh, we decided to actually go out to a farm. And uh, the clergy, the bishop, everybody loved it so well that uh, since that time, we're doing the Rural Life Day on the farm. And uh, we get a chance to see different kinds of farms. Uh, we've been on uh, different uh, kinds of agriculture. Uh, this year, of course, we're at a, celebrating at a, at a nice uh, dairy, a modern dairy. Uh, I think next year we're going to end up being in the cranberry bog someplace. <laughs> uh. So uh, we, try, we try to move it around, try to feature the different kinds of uh, agriculture that we have within the Diocese of La Crosse. Uh, one of the other things that we do uh, during this uh, particular celebration, besides celebrating the, the abundance that we produce, is that we have two different awards that we give out. We have what's called the Strangers and Guests Award, which is an actual operating farm uh, family, person, whatever. And then we have another one called the Friend of Rural Life. And this is someone that's involved in agriculture that supports our agriculture enterprises. Okay. The, the Diocese is huge, so you have you have a chance to feature all kinds of agriculture, as you mentioned. Is this the first time in Richland County since those days of Keysville, or has it been back this uh, year? I think we had one up in the Casanova area, but I can't remember if that was actually Richland County or uh, over in Juneau County. But uh, this would uh, either be the second or third time since I've been on now. Uh, prior to that, why they may have been here once before, but... Uh, uh, we, we just think this was an opportune time, and, and we do try to move it around, go to a different uh, deanery each, uh, each year. What kind of a crowd are you anticipating or usually shows up for these, do you know? Well, 
sometimes it will depend a little bit on weather, and sometimes it depends a little bit on how far to the corner of the diocese it is. But generally, the last few years, we've been running anywhere from 200 to uh, about uh, 350 people. And I think from what I'm hearing here, we're going to uh, have a, a on the upper side of that. Uh, the other thing that you might find unique is that uh, the Diocese of La Crosse really has the best rural life uh, group developed uh, in, in Wisconsin anyway. Uh, the uh, Diocese of Green Bay has a rural life celebration of sorts, but nothing to the size that we do. Uh, we are hearing rumors that uh, some from the Diocese of Madison are going to come up here to see just what we're doing. I know that uh, there are some from uh, the Dubuque area uh, going into Iowa that are looking uh, to come here and see just uh, how we go about celebrating rural life in uh, Wisconsin. The next question is, do you have to be Catholic to attend this? Absolutely not. We invite all people. Uh, we want, in fact, would love to have uh, non-Catholics and people that are at all interested in agriculture, come on out and see how things are done. Can't wait to talk more about it. Let's bring on Randy and Shelly Schmidt. They are here. Um, Randy, when they approached you about this, were you were you all in favor of it? Or who, who approached you, Shelly? You're pointing at one another. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly should take this one. Shelly should take this. Okay, Shelly. So you were gung-ho when you heard about it? Well, it's a nice opportunity to promote agriculture. And... Our farm really hasn't been open since we built our new setup and thought it was a nice opportunity to celebrate rural life and our community, and um, it all kind of worked out that way. Randy, why do you feel something like this is important? There is a vast differences in how people do things, but at the end of the day, we're all doing the same thing, which is trying to produce a nutritious, good product uh, for the consumers, and ours obviously is on the larger size of the spectrum uh, around here anyway and it's just to show how hand in hand you know how our dairy goes along and the crops and the cycle and you know and how how valuable the rural you know the the spiritualness and the in the life out here you know it's good to celebrate that right now we're chopping corn silage so you get to see the fruits of your labors for the last few months and uh it's, it is something to celebrate because you realize it's just not something you can do on your own. And how do the crops look this year, Andy? Uh, I'm extremely satisfied. It was a trying year to get them in, and uh, it's been a lot easier getting them out because of this dry period. But uh, with all the rain and everything else, and you worry about the nutrients somewhat leaching, but, I mean, our yields have been uh, very solid. Uh, I would say uh, as good as ever. Good. Uh, so you got to be proud that you're you're at the family farm location. Uh, can you give us a little history about your family farm? Um, well, the Schmitz originally they've been here about seventy years. Uh, they started up in Toma or well Clifton area is where they came from, and my grandpa moved down, and uh, dad uh, uh, was uh, in Elroy High School, and then actually transferred to uh, Ithaca. He graduated from Ithaca, and uh, uh, you know, Dad started farming and and uh, built it, and we milked you know 100 cows. And um, after uh, Shelly and I were married, and turned turned it over to us, and you know, we've just gradually built it up. And till about seven years ago, we um, uh, worked with a lot of the neighbors on rented land. A lot of them were uh, at the end of getting exiting dairy in and uh, they still wanted to see their farm farmed you know because the good thing about dairy farming is you're using alfalfa and crops crop you know for if it's hilly ground or anything it's good for the soil it's good for the area and and uh, a lot of them don't want to see the corn bean rotation they want to see other crops in and we do a lot of cover crops and uh, our you know, our farm, it grew, and um, now we're milking, you know, about 4,000 dairy cows, and uh, our son Ryan's involved in the operation, and, uh, 
We'll see where we go. <laughs> is this a photo of your son here that's on the pamphlet for Rural Life Day? Yes, it's him and uh, Lily. And Lily walking through the cows. That's the a pretty good on. shot right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's about twelve hundred feet from one end of the barn to the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long walk. At three hundred, at three hundred, it's a football field <laughs> wide. So that is crazy, Shelley. Uh, being a part, being a farmer, um, it, it takes a little faith, I think, doesn't it, during the year? Because you put those crops in, and you, you got to have faith that they're going to grow and and everything. So I think the two go hand in hand, don't they? Totally. If um, that's part of being a farmer, is you rely on what God's going to give you for that year. Right. And, you know, we've been blessed. You know, we've been farming for almost 39 years, almost 40 years we've been farming together and um, been very fortunate and um, through hard work um, and through raising our family and our employees, we've come to where we are today. And um, we want to kind of celebrate that, including... Um, what God has given us. Sure. When you were in high school, did you think that uh, you'd be involved in farming someday or not? <laughs> no, not, not really, not at all. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school at Ithaca, you tried to be in as many extracurriculars so you wouldn't have to go home and do chores. So. Right. Exactly, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, but that changed, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and it's been a good life, good place to raise a family. No doubt. Tell us a little bit about uh, kind of the, the uh, chain of events that will take part uh, during the Rural Life Day. Okay, yes. So um, September 18th at 10 o'clock on our farm. It'll be a Wednesday. And um, we'll start off the day with Mass. Um, our new bishop, bishop, bishop Battersby, out of La Crosse, will be um, celebrating Mass as with um, various priests and deacons from throughout the Richland Deanery. And, and then after Mass, we will, um, the bishop will be um, blessing the crops and our equipment and the things involved in agriculture. Um, also, I just wanted to mention during the ma for the Mass, we're having St. Mary's Choir come down and they will be the choir for the Mass. So that's going to be very nice. Um, after... After the program, the blessing of our farm, um, we will be offering a lunch. And that'll take place right right there in our shop. And, um, and then there will be an opportunity for touring the farm. So we have various people movers and tractors that you'll be able to hitch a ride on and kind of go through our operation from starting with the calves, seeing our rotary parlor, um, going through our um, freestall barn, mm -hmm. and um, and then circling back. So we're hoping that will give us a good, give everyone a good scope of what we do on our farm. That's awesome. So the blessing of the crops and animals. Do you actually bring an animal out to to bless? Yes, yes. We will have calves there, uh -huh. and then we'll have our machinery there, and then of course the crops in the field. Mm -hmm. Yes. You were telling me a story about the Keysville. Uh, tell that story about uh, Keysville when they did Rural Life so Day back in the day. My memory of Rural Life Day in Keysville, I think we were part of the music or something. But anyway, I remember they brought up um, different animals, and one of them was, was a pig. And they had a nice big pen made for the pig. And by the time Mass was over with that, that pig had dug up that whole pretty lawn. It was all dug up, ready to be planted again. So it was it was memorable. Did some fall plowing there. <laughs> right, right. I, I think this is just an awesome event, Randy, as, as you bring people out to, to the farm. And, and many have probably driven by and kind of wondering, uh, this is your opportunity to see up close and personal, right? Yeah, I think we, we've done a lot there. Uh, us and our employees, I mean, they have a lot to be proud of there. I mean, they're going to be excited about it, I think. And, you know, we've had employees with us for 25 years on down, you know, but I mean, we've had good retention. We're lucky to have them. And as Shelley was talking about extracurriculars, well, I also think that's what production egg in this community does. It, it provides the extracurriculars. Um, you know, the uptick from this, I mean, we have these three dairy plants in Richland Center, and of course, one in Muscaday, the volume of milk comes in here and the jobs that are created and, and just 
that whole thing with the feed companies there and how it all works together i mean it does make this a special place to live around here this is this is rural and to me rural means you're always giving a little more i we we look at the people that support our farm and then what they also bring back to the communities you know they're firefighters they're emts they're first responders they're teach you know this it, it, it truly does make this rural area a special place to be um because it you you can't just wear one hat here you have to do many things and and, and just like we do many things in the farm other people do many things to support us and support this community and as we all know this is a special place well said how many people uh, do you employ at the farm there any idea so so we generally have around 40 people okay. throughout the year and then the summertime that upticks a little bit so very yeah a lot a lot to to get done and and they do a very well job and with that many cows randy it must be like uh how many hours a day do you milk it's uh 24 oh you do i mean okay. well we there's we, not a break two 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 times a day to wash for about 40 minutes and otherwise it's pretty steady ah interesting and where do you send uh most of your milk uh, foremost farms foremost, okay and um, if we were doing kosher milk, which we've done in the past, it would go to Muscadet to Meisters. Okay, sure. Must keep the trucks running pretty um, continuously. Uh, five, five super tankers a day of milk, usually. <laughs> Sometimes a little more. Well. Hopefully not less. <laughs> <laughs> and your farm was the site of the Farm Progress Day some 2000, years ago. 2002. Has it been that long? 22 years. So I guess it's time to bring some people back to the farm, <laughs> I feel. <So. laughs> A lot has changed. Because I think about where the headquarters were. That's kind of right about where all of your new facilities, the, isn't it? The dairy's a parking lot. Was a park Was where the parking lot okay. was. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It was us in the Green X uh, that hosted that. And uh, it, the dairy kind of sits right on the line between us and, and the Green Egg Farm. Okay. So. so this will be about the most guests you've had since that time then, right? Uh, we've had uh, some tours and things. But, yeah, this will definitely be a bigger event than than, than we've had in the past. So Wow. And, and Shelly, you're going to have to do a lot of sandwich making that day. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we... We are getting it catered in. Oh, and you're not um, going to have a fish and some loaves of yeah. bread. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It depends how many people come. That okay. we <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the jury's still out on that. You run so. low, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, so people are, are there for the lunch again. What time does it start? Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock in the morning. And we're there'll be parking on the farm. Okay. So just come off um, Highway 14. Um, we'll have have signs up. Yes, it's. It's we're in Fairview Road, just out of Gotham, um, and you'll be able to see because that's we're the first farm that you'll get to on Fairview, and um, you'll see there'll be people there to help direct you where you need to go. And if you happen to park a distance away, we we do have um, different people movers lined up and UTVs that would help you get to the shop. Okay, um, that's going to be an awesome thing just for, for kids. There's a lot of kids that don't get that close to a farm, Shelley. Right, yeah. right. It is, it is on a school day. Oh, it is? Okay, well, they can skip that day. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be shut. Yeah, all are welcome, actually. All uh -huh. are welcome. Uh -huh. Great opportunity. Dick, anything that you'd like to add here as you listen to the conversation? Well, I was just thinking back. Uh, I was one of those that was involved in that uh, farm progress show. In fact, that sure. was the last year that it was called Wisconsin Farm Progress Show. Oh, right. From that time on, it's been called Wisconsin Farm Technology Days. Yeah. So uh, just wanted to throw that thing in. And then as Randy was talking, I was uh, thinking about a, something that I'd heard quite some time ago. And it said, the land, it is not mine. It is just mine to tend for a while. Mm. Pretty deep oh. there, Dick. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. So, um, Rural Life Day, it's close. You don't have to drive very far this year, do you? No, this is uh, probably the closest that uh, it's been to me since they first got me hooked into <laughs> Rural Life uh, Committee. That's awesome. So, you have a stage set up there, Randy, for, or Shelly? Yeah, so we actually have two stages. Okay. Um, we have a stage on the main level, and then and actually the altar is going to be placed on our second floor if we're looking the shop and so it's going to be kind of a, a neat i think a neat way to to have mass and 
and such. It should be pretty kind of neat. And this uh, is this in the new buildings? I noticed you built yeah, some new buildings uh, recently. It's the new shop. The new shop then. So should have enough room for everybody there. So yeah. Yep. And you'll have to be on your best behavior, Andy, with all of that clergy there and everything, too, right? <laughs> Always on the best behavior. I know you are. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, we'll talk about Rural Life Day more when we continue with the morning show and also about the uh, pet project called Project Milk when the morning show continues. Rural Life Day, our subject in this portion of the morning show, the 43rd annual put on by the Lacrosse Diocese. Randy and Shelley Schmidt and Dick Hauser, our guests. Uh, Randy and Shelley, can you talk about your family for us? So we have four children, um, three boys and a girl, um, Reagans and Racine, teaching um, band and uh, fine arts director for Racine District. Ryan um, is, they all graduated from UW-Madison. So um, Ryan went into uh, dairy science. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Went into dairy science and, and kind of worked into the farm. So he is very instrumental into our operation. Uh, Logan's uh, finance out of Minneapolis and then Courtney's in uh, rehab counseling out of Madison. Um, so they've all been instrumental in, in getting us from point A to point B. Ryan has been, since our, especially since our new setup, um, very instrumental in creating that, creating the nice conditions of the newer technology that is needed to to do what we do. Mm -hmm. Came back and taught Dad some new tricks then, it sounds like. Dad's a slow learner. <laughs> 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 they, t they try and try. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. But, but how fortunate you are to have... Uh, yeah one of your your children Correct. come back and help you out yeah well it it does make it all worth or worthwhile i mean we're that's what you hope for i think that's what all farms hope for is a uh, heir to continue farming sometimes it works out sometimes it don't but that's you know and like dick said taking care of the land i mean those are those are learned things you learn them from your parents you learn them from your grandparents you you know you learn them from your neighbors who are good stewards of the land i mean your eyes are your best teaching tool you see what other people are doing and when they're doing things that seem to be working and look good you you know there's there's nothing wrong with uh following following the lead mm -hmm. I remember going to farm progress days back in the day, like high school age, and seeing, you know, robotic milkers, you know, things of the future. Yeah. And I thought, boy, that's never going to work, you know. <laughs> Who knew <laughs> where we are? And and how, wh what do you think about the future, Randy, down the line, you know, 10, 20 years? Because we think about how much it's changed in the last 10 to 20 years. I think we will. Obviously, labor is always a big issue. Sure. I mean, you need to get efficient just because, especially when they come from the farm, they, they're they more valuable than other places, I think. I, we've seen that throughout this county, that the things that they the young people have gone on to accomplish from here that aren't farming, but they still have that rural background. And it's it's the things they learned on that farm that made them who they are. And and. Uh, these companies certainly want that, and I'm just hoping that we can keep some of that going because uh, it's getting harder and harder. But you know, we need we need that mm -hmm. most definitely. Anything you'd like to add today, Shelley? Well, I just want to invite everybody out to celebrate rural life, rural communities, and the role that production agriculture has on our community. Amen. Dick, anything else? No, I think uh, I've talked long enough, Phil, but again, <laughs> I certainly want to extend an invitation to not just the people from the Catholic faith, but the people from the entire area to come out, uh, enjoy the day, and uh, see how well-managed a large farm can be. I think it's uh, great that we have that opportunity because there are always those that are uh, against it, uh, but hey, this is still a family farm, and it's where we need to be here in Wisconsin. Coming up, Rural Life Day, Wednesday, September 18th at uh, Randy and Shelley Schmidt and Ryan and Chrissy Schmidt Farm. The Rural Life Day is also a fundraiser day for Project Milk. So let's talk to Dick Hauser a little bit more about that. I'll get going again. Uh, Project <laughs> Milk uh, was started back in uh, the early 80s when uh, the 
it was hard to get three dollars a hundredweight for milk here in Wisconsin, and farmers were really in need of uh, of a new market. And then the other part of that is down in Peru, we have an orphanage that uh, called Casa Harga, and they uh, are, it's sponsored by the La Crosse Diocese, and they had a, a lot of uh, orphan children that lived there. And one of the things that they needed was to get better nutrition. And so uh, there was a plant in Sparta, uh, can't remember, I think it was called Golden Guernsey, but I'm not sure, uh, that uh, had the ability to make powdered milk. And so uh, the Rural Life Committee of the Diocese of La Crosse decided to start collecting money to try to buy enough milk to make a uh, container load and ship down to Peru to our orphanage. And uh, uh, we did that for a few years. Well, then uh, the plant in Sparta went out, and we had some troubles finding uh, milk. And a lot of the powder milk that's available is strictly the low-fat kind uh, or, or de- uh, whatever. Uh, and so finally, about two years ago, we did find a new source where we can ship uh, powder and ship a whole milk. And this has just been such a boon to the orphanage down there because they can not only uh, reconstitute the milk, but they can make uh, uh, yogurt out of it. And then they can also help other orphanages and other places in the country to uh, be able to give their kids better nutrition. Do they take donations then? Oh, yes. Uh, we, we take donations year-round, but uh, we especially do at the Rural Life Day uh, the collection taken up uh, during the Mass, and also uh, another collection will be uh, available for people to contribute. Um, right now, because of the price of milk and so forth, it costs us close to $80,000 to put together a 40,000-pound container and get it shipped down to Peru. Hmm. So a huge undertaking. So yeah, and we try to do it once a year. Yeah, awesome. Well, no, I think Shelley can tell a little bit more. I mean, even with Project Milk, about you've watched the videos and the kids, um, what what it means to them when they get this container load of milk. So Project Milk is yeah, it's a lifeblood. They actually use it for bartering too, and um, and then you know hearing once we were on board with. Um, sponsoring this day we learned about project milk and we really want people to support it's a win-win situation it's a win for farmers it's a win for kids and um all proceeds generated that day is going to go towards project milk great so yeah i think when you saw that video of them getting that and just seeing what that i mean we take food security for granted in this country Mm -hmm. and to see that where they not only they give it to other orphanages, they use it for currency. I mean, that food is kind of their lifeblood to keep that orphanage going. And I think in this country, we just expect that food is always going to be there and everything. But to be part of that food chain and and to see that and also to see what we do as production egg, I mean, food is food is power. This country is very fortunate to have farmers toiling and and the support people the people working at the milk plants i mean farming's 24 7 but there's a lot of other jobs that are related to farming that are also 24 7 and to see the effort people put in to make that happen so that this country can it's what makes this country strong that's why you're proud to be a farmer absolutely well said and proud to be a part of project milk too i think proud to be very proud that's what got me really interested in this whole thing was the project once i saw that it's like all the money raised that day is going there, and I'm pretty excited about it. Awesome. Thanks for coming in, everybody. We appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Phil. you for the opportunity. You Phil. bet. And we hope people will come out for Rural Life Day at the Schmidt Farm. And that's Wednesday, September 18th.